ask you to stand for the reading of God's Word and find Genesis, the very first book in the Bible. And laugh, but I want us to read the Word of God, Genesis chapter 4, starting in verse 1. It says, Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant. Those two things kind of go hand in hand together. And gave birth to Cain. Think about the very first birth, the miracle of birth. And she said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth man. And later, she gave birth to his brother, Abel. And now Abel kept the flocks, and Cain worked the soil. And verse 3 says, in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of his soil as an offering, he gave an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, but he brought a fatty portion from some of his first fruits, the best of his flock. And the Lord looked with favor on Abel, on his offering. And verse 5 says, But Cain and his offering did God didn't look on favor with that. And so Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. And the Lord said, Hey, Cain, what are you angry about? Why are you downcast? In verse 7, he says it. He says, If you do what's right, then you will be accepted. But if you don't do what is right, sin is crouching at the door its desires to have you but you must Cain you got to rule over that sin and verse 8 says now Cain said to his brother Abel Abel hey hey let's go out to my field while it's in my field and Cain attacked his brother Abel and he killed him and then the Lord said to Cain Cain where's your brother Abel he said I don't know and he replied, Am I supposed to be my brother's keeper? In verse 10, the Lord, he says, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. To me from the ground. Lord Jesus, we pray you open the word of God that we can see. I ask you in the name of Jesus where Satan has put blinders over our eyes. We don't even know what truth is anymore. In the name of Jesus, snatch the blinders off our eyes that we can see this Easter for the first time through your blood and what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I told you you, want to, you need to laugh. You need to be joyful when you come to church. It's not a place you're going to get beat up. You know, it's, it's kind of funny. Two uh, cowboy pastors decided they was going to put up a sign, and they was trying to help folks out. And they said, and they got their T-post drivers out, and these cowboy pastors said, I'm going to put this sign up. And they put it out in front of the church and said, Hey, turn yourself around for it's too late. About that time, this old Dodge duly come flying by there. Had them big old round, you know, at the end. All that crazy people do, you know, make it loud. And he's pulling a 28-foot trailer full of yearlings. And that cowboy stuck his head out the window and said, Hey, you crazy cowboy preachers, get a job. They looked at each other, and that truck come flying around the corner. Here directly, they heard that jake break. And all this, these slamming on the brakes and skidding tires and all them yearlings going, Brrr! big splash. <laughs> Cowboy preachers look at each other. You reckon we should have just said bridge out? <laughs> and that's all I'm trying to do today is to tell you, turn yourself around for it's too late. That's what we're preaching about. Turn yourself around for it's too late. Look back at verse 9. It says, And then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? Cain lied. He said, I don't know. He shrugged his shoulder like your dumb teenager does at the house or like your husband does. <laughs> I don't know. 
And he replied, am I supposed to be my brother's keeper? Am I supposed to be the one keeping up with him? He lied to God. I'll give you a little secret. Is when God asks you a question, you better take it real serious. You need to start praying when God asks you a question. Look at verse 10. And the Lord said, what have you done? He said, listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. The blood cried out to God from the ground. There's something powerful to God about the blood. And that's the title of this message today. Look at it. Listen to the blood. Listen to the blood. What does this message, this, what does Genesis have to do with Easter? Everything. Because there's a thread that goes from Genesis to Revelations with the blood. And if you pay real close attention... And listen to the blood. You'll see some things that you've missed along the way. You'll see some things that you weren't taught along the way. You'll see some things today, right here, right now, that'll change your life forever if you listen to the blood. The blood spoke out to God, cried out to God. You got to think, Genesis is the book of beginnings. God's always consistent. He's always consistent. How many of you believers know that the Word of God is true? Let me hear you. It is true. And we can trust Him. We react to things. God never reacts. God acts. We react and lose control. God always acts. He never loses control. He is God. He's seated at the corner of of the foundations of the universe. He is all-powerful. He knows all. And why should we listen? Look at this. Because you need to know God. You need to know God because God is life. God is healing. God is help. God is Wholeness. You're looking for things in the wrong places. God is wholeness. God is fullness. God is peace. God is understanding. Knowing God is forgiveness. And you come to, to know Him. We are a reflection of who He is. Knowing God is knowing your daddy. Knowing God, come on somebody, is everything. He is God Almighty. Can I get a big old shout? Somebody get happy in here before the thunder ever clapped for the first time. He was God. Before there was ever a north or a south, he was God. Before Saturn and Pluto and Mars and Jupiter, a sun, a moon, the Big Dipper ever was, he was God. And that's who we're talking about here today. He is everlasting you need to know him. You really do need to know him. Not watch him, not check him out on Easter, not give him some. You, you need to know God. You got to think about the way God thinks. You got to think about his mind and how consistent he is. And how your grandmother or your great-grandmama knitted a blanket together. Thread by thread. Piece by piece with thread. You think about this thread in the Bible right here that starts in Genesis. And Satan in Genesis confused Eve. And mankind fell. Man fell. And crazy, the first dysfunctional family was the very first family. So you think your family's dysfunctional? We all crazy. And we all need Jesus. Come on, don't sit there and act like you something. 
My family is dysfunctional. You should have seen us yesterday at Easter. We didn't know whether we want to fight or cut somebody or pray. I had all three of them ideas on that day. At my own house, dysfunctional. Adam and Eve, dysfunctional. Guess what? They're crazy. Went to their kids, Cain and Abel here. They're crazy too. We all need Jesus. We all need church. We all need forgiveness. Can I get a big amen? We all need it. There ain't nobody here looking down on you, and you sure hope you ain't looking down on me. Listen to the blood. Listen to this thread that starts right here and leads us up to today where we celebrate Easter. Adam and Eve, they sinned against God. They knew they were naked. The first sacrifice was made. God killed an animal and covered them with an animal. The first offering was given as that blood ran down on Adam's thighs. And that's where we're at. And you look at verse 3. Look back at Genesis 4, verse 3 and 4. It says, In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of his soil as an offering to God. <laughs> he gave to God. He gave an offering to God. And so that should be a good thing. He gave. And it says he gave some of the fruits. But look at verse 4. Then Abel also brought an offering. There's a big difference in what they gave. One was of the fatty portion from some of his first of his flock, the very best, not left over, the very best. And the Lord looked with favor on Abel's, Abel and his offering. The difference is one brought some and the other brought the fatty portion, the best to God. And what happened? Cain got mad. It's funny to me how people get mad at me or get mad at people when they're trying to honor God because it makes them look bad. And they get mad at you and you think you're trying to make them look bad, but you're not trying to make them look bad. You're just trying to honor God with your materials and your earthly treasures, your time and your abilities, and you're trying to earn. That's the only three things we got, time, earthly treasures, and abilities. That's all we all got to give to God as an offering. Cain got mad because Abel honored God more than he did. And so look at verse 6. It says, Then the Lord said to Cain, Why in the world are you hot? Why are you mad? He says, why is your face downcast? Like a stupid old teenager shrugging his shoulders like, Moo, you know, it's not me. I didn't do nothing wrong. He says, why are you angry? Why you got your face down? Look at verse 7. And he says, if you just do what's right, you'll be accepted. But if you do not do what's right, Sin is crouching at the door, and it desires to have you. After I finally came to the Lord, please don't be like the preacher. Over half of my years, I done blowed up. When I finally came to the Lord as a 29-year-old man, I finally came. I saw God blessing some people and I saw God not blessing others and it was weird it's like how come God's blessing this person this family but he's not blessing this person this family and look what God says if you do what's right you will not be accepted if you do if you do what is right will you not be accepted but if you do not do what's right, sin's crouching at the door. All he's saying is if you do what's right, you'll get what they have. If you do what's right, you'll get what those people God's blessing have. But if you do wrong, he says sin's sitting there like a lion crouching at the door. Crouching at the door. You do what's wrong, 
You do your crazy stuff, and sin takes over. And you wonder why things are happening to you and your family. Crazy stuff. Crazy. And you wonder why your kids doubt Jesus. You wonder why they don't want to come to church. You wonder why they doubt Jesus. It's because they saw you doubt Jesus. They saw you doubt Jesus. Why are your kids and your grandkids not all in? Because you're not all in. You're not all in. Why are they half-hearted about Jesus? Because you half-hearted about Jesus. Come on, somebody, I'm preaching. Half-hearted. Look at verse 8. Y'all listening real good. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Hey, let's go out to the field. He said, I don't want to fight you on your territory. You come out here where I'm at. You come to my field. While I feel Cain attacked his brother and he killed him. He got mad because Abel honored God more and sin was crouching at his door. He said, come on out to my territory, brother. Come to my territory. He didn't want to fight him where he was at. And God listened to what was happening. God knew what was happening. And this is a picture of what Satan did to Jesus. Jesus was in heaven. Satan got his tail kicked out of heaven and the demons with him. And Satan wanted to fight Jesus on his territory down here on this earth. And Satan did. He said, come to my field, come to my territory, come down out of heaven. And God didn't stop it. God didn't stop it. God came down and he asked Cain the question. He said, what'd you do? Again, be careful when God asks you a question. Because I guarantee you, God's asking you a question here today. I guarantee you. I want you to look at this from a three-dimensional perspective. From the Cain's perspective, from Abel's perspective, and from Eve's perspective. This happens in Eve. She's the one that blew her family all to pieces. She's the one that dishonored God. She's the reason they were the first homeless family got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. She's the reason all this stuff went crazy. And she has all this guilt on her. All this, and she has this one baby, and he ain't it. But then she has this Abel. Now she's got birthed out of her body a way to fix all this stuff. And she's got all this taking place, and she's so excited. Abel's going to make a difference for God, and she's going to repair this. But then Abel dies. He gets killed. They killed my baby. They didn't just kill my baby, but they killed what I had to fix all this stuff. Killed what I had in mind to repair my life, to repair these things. They killed my redemption. They killed my plans, my ways. And you thought you'd be further along than you are right now. How many of us have stood over a grave and your plans are gone? You see, and you think about Eve and the brokenheartedness, but she didn't just lose one boy she lost two she lost both of them because the one that killed the other one was cursed she lost everything go back to the thread think about the thread we don't find until hebrews that satan didn't win in this situation that satan did not win at all that Abel actually had to die because God was using it as a picture, a type, a shadow from the New Testament cast across the Old Testament, a type. And God could have stopped the, Abel's body being sacrificed and killed, but he didn't because he wanted to use it as an example to show us, listen to the blood, what God was going to do with the blood on our behalf. And here's my point. 
It started with Abel offering a lamb. Then it started with Abel being offered up himself. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The story, you go back in the thread of this blood. And God made the first sacrifice of the blood of animal for Adam and Eve. And then here's another sacrifice of blood of Abel. And it's the picture of what God is going to do for us with the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen to the blood. And then the blood in the Old Testament was spread across the doorpost to save all those who believe. It was the blood of bullocks and goats and sheep. And it was a symbol that saved them from death. And what we need to understand is that blood was just a substitute for the real lamb. And then it was right here. It was right here where God presented his plan. And God revealed that the blood of a lamb was just a substitute for a man. It was right here that God reveals this. Look at it on your screen. That the lamb is a man and the man is a lamb. Think about that. Listen to the blood. That the lamb is a man and the man is a lamb. And the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for you on Calvary. And he died. And God stood by while they ripped the flesh off of his back while they tortured him and crucified him. And God watched Jesus die, not from his wounds, not from the loss of blood. He died because of what you did. He died of a broken heart Because he took my sins upon him and your sins upon him. He took your sins. And he died because he that knew no sin became sin. Listen to the blood. And so they put Jesus... In the tomb. He said, It is finished. And when he said that, all hell rejoiced and said, Let's throw a party. It's over. Mary thought it was over. All the people that thought the Messiah had been killed, the disciples scattered like a bunch of roaches. It's over. When they said his finish is over, and they're putting that dead body in the tomb and sealed it, and Roman guards are standing there, they think he said it's over. But in three days, you look at Luke chapter 24. Come on, somebody. The stone, they went to check it out, and they were bringing spices. By this time, If you've ever seen a body laying there for three days of a deer on the side of the road all blowed up, old hog or something, maggots, flies, everything, they're bringing spices because there's decay going on and the stone is rolled away and they're sitting there and there's two angels standing there and says, what are y'all all all down facing and scared about? Why are you looking for somebody that's dead when he's alive? He is not here. He has risen. Listen. He has risen. The lamb is a man and the man is the lamb. The lamb was Jesus. God let him suffer for you. God 
let him pay for you. God, let him die for you. Then he rose again for you, preparing a place for you in heaven. That's how much God loves you. That's how much. Pay attention. Listen to the blood. God reconciled us to him for all eternity with the blood. God forgave us with the blood. God Allowed Jesus. Jesus paid with his blood. God did all this for you. And what does he ask in return? All he asks in return is that you respect him. All he asks in return is that you give him your life. He gave his life for you. All he asks in return is that you honor him and that you live your life with purpose for him. But then you get it all. <laughs> you get forgiveness, you get salvation, you get peace, you get freedom, you get purpose in this world. That's why you need to know God. And that's why you don't need to neglect the blood. What's neglect mean in the original text? Neglect means to omit it, push it away. Neglect means to leave it out of your life. Neglect means to ignore it. Neglect means to be slack about it. Neglect means to dodge it, to dodge it. To neglect means to disregard it. But in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, look at it. It says, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Listen to the blood. It was declared at first by our Lord and then was attested to us by those who heard. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Hell was only created for the devil and the demons that follow him and for those that neglect the blood. that leave out, ignore, slack, dodge, disregard the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen to the blood. This is a question that God is asking you. I said in the beginning, listen to it. Look at this on the screen. Jesus gave his blood for you Will you give your life to him? Jesus gave his blood for you. He's asking you right now, will you give your life to him? Listen to the blood. God said in Genesis 4, listen, his blood is crying out to me. If that happened with Abel, how much more is the blood of Jesus crying out to God? And how shall you escape if you neglect the blood in your life? I want you to touch somebody to your left and say, tap them on the shoulder, say, listen, 
Now turn to somebody on your right and say, listen, just tap on them. Wake them up. Listen. Listen. Reach somebody and thump somebody in the back of the head up in front of you. Get up and slap them. Say, listen. 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 Your life is not out of control. Your life, God has your back. Listen. Greater is he that's in you than that stuff you're going through if you turn to God. Listen. He shed his blood for you so you can be forgiven. Listen. Listen to the blood. Give Jesus your life. Listen. And your kids and your grandkids and your friends, even your cousin will follow you. Listen to the blood. Listen. For God so loved you that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believe and listen to the blood and give your life to Jesus will not perish. That reserved spot for you in hell won't happen. You'll go to heaven. He says, will not perish, but have eternal life. Listen to the blood. And I, I told you I was going from Genesis to Revelations. Look at it. Look at it. Revelations 3, 19. He says, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline so be zealous to repent what's he saying turn yourself around for it's too late turn yourself around for it's too late verse 20 says Jesus says behold I stand at the door and knock and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come in and I will eat with him and he with me. Turn yourself around for it's too late. Listen to the blood, all that his blood has done for you. How can you escape if you neglect the blood of Jesus? I don't think there's any way. I want to ask you to pray. You have realized by now Nobody looking around. Sit still for just a second. Give God, honor God right now with your thoughts, with your mind. You realize this is not a normal service, is it? Because God's here right now. Right now, listen to the Holy Spirit. He is knocking. Open the door. Listen. You know there needs to be a change in your life. He is not going to kick that door down. you got to reach and open the door of your life and pray to invite him in. Say, Jesus, come into my life. If you want me to pray that prayer with you right now, if you want to pray, nobody looking around. I'm the only one who got my eyes open. You don't even have to open your eyes. And you want me to pray for you to receive Jesus right now. You want to open the door of your life, and you're tired of slamming the door on God. You're going to open it wide open, and you want me to pray for you right now. Nobody looking around. I just want you to stick your hand up loud and proud, and you want me to pray that prayer. Come on, stick it up. Come on. Amen. Stick it up. Hold it up there. God sees that. You're saying, hey, I need Jesus in my life. I'm going to get this right right now. Lord Jesus, you see the hands. You see the people that's serious about you. You see the people that are not going to neglect the blood. In the name of Jesus, hear their cry right now. And just say to him, Jesus, forgive me for neglecting the blood, for dodging you. Forgive me for all the times I've pushed you out of my life and I've slammed the door in your face. Right now, I'll open the door to my life. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you come into me and you forgive me of my sin, my wrong choices. I need to plead the blood of Jesus to cover my sins over me. In the name of Jesus, forgive me and fill me right now with the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, come into me right now. In Jesus' name. Amen.